Hello, welcome to my show. My name is Patrick, and uh, I'm going to talk about a few things. And we'll start with I read someone thought uh, the Queen of England was going to pass soon, or she already has, and they haven't told anybody. So let's look into that quickly, and then. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and then what I have is she passes or resigns in the spring, all right? And then they skip Charles and go straight to Prince William. He is the next king. And William used to be like this, a five on my consciousness, Christ consciousness, Buddha consciousness scale. And uh, when he was younger, and now it went do-do-do-do-do-do. He's down below one. Uh, don't beat up on him because you don't know. We don't know his life, you know, and that's why we can't judge these people. I mean, he was probably a nice kid, and then they made him do these dark ceremonies, and he went darker and darker, pushing out the previous soul or s subjugating it to a demonic type being. And <clears throat> this is probably common for the people up there in uh, the higher, you want to call them ruling class, They're, they probably are, they're not going to be there a lot longer. But uh, anyway, he goes down and he's still there. I, I asked, is there a soul still there? And it goes, yes. So he's still tethered to that body, the original soul. And anyway, he will be king, all right? And it's not the original soul in control. I, I guess that's the way to look at it. And I don't know, uh, now you remember Trump was a also very dark like in 1990. But by the time Melania comes around in 1997, 98, he changes significantly. Uh, as if he had an epiphany or he had a walk-in like I brought in. I think a lot of that is at play Maybe we don't have the right vocabulary to describe what transpired to bring Trump up to a higher consciousness. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, right now he is under attack like never ever for any president. He is almost all by himself. And if it wasn't for the few family members he brought along, I mean, he would be totally outgunned. Uh, <clears throat> I had a, a relative who, who, who dreams very well and he had a dream last night where uh, Trump was like, he was totally surrounded and infiltrated by the other side. And it, there was really, he didn't know what to do. And I think he's in that position now. So the prayers do help. For him, I mean, it'd be really great if everybody prayed for him. And uh, right now, I have Mueller is uh, will be leaving near the end of August. Either he's going to be fired or he's going to resign. I'm getting he's going to resign. All right, I don't understand how he would do that, but I think uh, as they investigate him, more things will come out. He's not this angel, and all the people he hired are. Uh, no. Let me just say, okay, is is we're gonna? I got the. Uh, um, uh, let's do this. I'm I'm kind of schizophrenic today, Ugh. and uh, I want to see what angel card Trump has for the month of of. Uh, and let's pull a card for Trump for the month of August, and what does he get? Harmony. Harmony. Harmony is the angel card. That's probably good news. That's that's talking about, you know, trying to get his message out, but how can you get your message out? Now we remember Spicer was from the D the RNC initially. He did six months, six years there, and then he was hired. I think What's happening is Trump is being told when he became power. You're asking, 
how did he appoint these people, you know, like Rosenstein in the uh, Justice Department, who started this whole Russian probe special uh, counsel. And the thing is, I think he's giving a choice of A and B, and A and B are not acceptable to the American people. They're really scumbags. But I think Trump did not know that until he got into power. He was sworn in and he was told who runs this country and there's nothing he can do about it. So, and he's trying to, uh, this is very interesting, uh, a couple presidents have done this. Kennedy, he says, I'm the president, I'm not gonna listen to these people and they took him out. He did what he wanted to do and they took him out. Uh, Reagan, Reagan said, I'm president, I'm gonna do what I wanna do, I'm gonna fulfill this and they shot him. He was supposed to be killed. and. So Trump is in a similar situation. This is the beginning of his presidency. And he goes, no, I am president. I'm going to do what I want. And that's what this huge battle we see. All right. So I see that uh, if Trump fired Mueller, it would, it would go really bad for him for about a month to five weeks. Like everybody's calling for impeachment. But the bottom line is there's... There's no impeachable offense. He's allowed to do it. But they won't say that on the news channels. They'll just say he's a crook and ba da da da. And you got to realize the most of the country is basically ignorant. And they want to be ignorant. It's hard to get through life and ask the question why to things. And, uh, and, and, and actually go on a spiritual journey. And then you have... Uh, you have all this battle. You, you can't worry about the ruling class. It, it, you know, it's Rome. This is Rome. We have the Senate. And, and the emperor is being taken down because it's just a fight between the families, you know, of who rule Rome. And we have the same issue. Now, we have also... Uh, we're at the 82% mark of that dark cabal that runs the country. You remember I said during uh, Kennedy's time it was 35%, 30 to 35%. The dark hand, I call it, which is the black hand, the, that is specter <laughs> or chaos, if you will, from the man from uncle. Uh, it's, a, it's a criminal organization that sort of uh, was competing with um, the Christian part of the country, you know, the Protestant, Catholic, whatever. It was all, you know, that group that, that saw that if you worked hard for a living, you can have a career, have a family. And the dark hand destroyed that. They wanted to destroy middle America. They wanted to destroy the family. They wanted to destroy, and they want to put the sense in you of hopelessness and helplessness. You know, they wanted to instill that. And that's why all the movies and TVs are hopelessness, helplessness. There's nothing you can do. The world is dark, dark, dark. That is what they're selling. Uh, John F. Kennedy really represented the last president where there was that uh, palace on a hill. You know, the city of God, St. Augustine. Remember that? And, uh, you know, these, we can, we can have light in our life but we can't we're in the 3d we had a war going on and light was and has been losing the war since kennedy kennedy was a game changer even world war ii was a game changer i mean all these were just steps along the way and technically you go all the way back to the civil war for this country that's a war we probably sh could have avoided we don't have uh the documentation to come and see the light of the day that there were alternatives to the war to get around us and people were willing to do it. The people that had the hand in the Civil War were uh, the banks. Remember Chase? Chase was uh, on Lincoln's board. He was the Secretary of Treasury, I forget. Oh, the hermit. <laughs> that popped out on me talking. That could be me. <laughs> It could be it could be Trump, too. He's uh, he's trapped. Anyway, 
all these wars we've had, we didn't have to have. All right? It's just the dark hand. And now the dark hand has the upper hand, total control of all our institutions. And when I douse it, I'll douse it for you right now. Maybe I, I don't know if I can stand up and do it. Maybe, let me see, can you see this? Yeah, you can see this. I have to get up. Okay, when we douse this, I'm looking at you. Okay, here's, show me the percentage. This is one to 100% is over here, 100%. Okay, show me the dark hand rule and authority over the United States of America. Do you see that? 82%. Do you see that? Show me the dark hand at, night, at the end of 2018. 2018 to dark hand. There's a little dip there. Not much. Just a tiny bit. I would say he's like at 75%. Show me the dark hand at the end of 2019. 2019. Wow, they're down to 50%. It's going down a little bit. Wow. So at the 2019, I will say it's 40% is their control. So we're back to the Kennedy era, 1960. Show me the dark hand at the end of 2020. 2020. Their, their, their grip of power on America. Their grip of power in America. So I try to be observant and loose, and I give it some patience and time. It's really, really low. If I'm not mistaken, this is just about 1% or zero. It's almost zero. You're at a time, you're gonna witness in a very compressed period of time the fall of the black hand ruling this country, which right now, this is the apex of their power. So we're seeing Trump being overwhelmed. He is fighting, he's, be, he's our champion. And he had to hire these people, he was given no choice. He did this, he didn't really know it. Some of it he was forced to do, and some of it he, he kinda just went along with it, all right? Saying, I can deal with these people, I'll just put them in a shoebox over here but they're so effective so what's going to happen now we knew that Spicer wasn't hundred percent on board he was an RNC man and uh, but all his family uh, Jared and his daughter and Banyan I think Banyan is uh, where's Banyan see Banyan is boom hundred percent Banyan is like 95 percent for Trump he's the true believer He's the political officer. You know, in the Soviet Union, you had a captain of a ship, a big ship, or a big, big submarine. You, you, you saw it in that movie, Red October. And then you had the political officer. And uh, the Nazis had the same thing. You had the captain of the ship, and you had the political officer. They're two different jobs, and they were, and the political officer kept everybody in line. That's sort of Banyan's job. He's the political officer in the White House. He's a reminder of what the country wants. He represents what the country wants on a few items, but on the populist item to turn the country around, to turn the world around. But he can't do it. I mean, they're outgunned. They're really outgunned. And I just showed you uh, they're gonna lose. And it's just not Trump who's gonna fight. They're, they're, they're losing a cross because uh, we're at a position where um, the political correct culture, these are, this is not about cor political correct being a high moral value. It's used as a power tool to oppress you, to control you. That's the whole thing. It's to suppress what you feel in your heart. You feel something, but you can't say it because they'll beat you up. <laughs> so that's that's it and, and the dowsing shows that on everything so you remember a year ago I did the the dowsing on the political correctness as a cultural phenomenon on the university campuses and it was uh, it was very powerful until we get up to this semester coming up which is 
September, October, November, whatever. And it, it's going to have big pushback coming against that culture. You know, this, what do you call them? Social justice warriors, political correctness. Really, really weird. They're really indefensible what they're saying and what they're doing on these campuses. But there's going to be a big blowback, and it's starting now. And you're going to see that the political correct culture this semester is going to be very weak. Let's see how uh, weak. Okay, give me last, last semester... Uh, uh, we'll call this light and this dark over here political correctness uh, two semesters ago okay last fall on campus give me the political correct uh, culture it was very very strong okay negative 80 percent okay last semester last semester negative 70%. It's still very, very strong. This semester coming up, this semester, fall semester, the political correct, social justice warrior, boom. It's really, really a big change. I'm getting positive 50. Where is it next semester? The spring semester. Boom. Light prevails. It's really, it's 100% over to light freedom of speech 100% next semester the spring semester uh, this one coming up is 50% what did I say last semester was <laughs> uh, I think I said it's 60 so it's a huge swing it's gonna be night and day what's what's happening and part of this is um, the universities are seeing that these faceless administrators and their minions certain faculties especially in the liberal arts Liberal arts is supposed to be about Plato, Aristotle. You know, a classical education is, uh, who else was it? Uh, you, you learn Latin and ancient Greek. <laughs> ancient Greek is really hard to learn, but people, people know, knew Latin and they understood the context of, you know, the Piscean Age. Is that, is that right? And then we're going to the Aquarian. We're, we're Aquarian right now. So in this really short period of time of like three years, we're going to be witnessing this huge shift in consciousness between uh, all these people. I was actually going to make a two-minute video. I'm sorry. I kind of kept going. Because all these things I'm talking about are changing. Now Soros, now this is just me. I doubt he died four months ago. The organization is still going forward. The, the open society still got money, but we're going to see a, a huge change in the next one to two months. All right? One to two months. You're going to say a whole shit. The money's going to start drying up. In three months, he's going to cut his organization, that is. This, this phantom that's still functioning is going to cut all their money. Because light is being shown on the Soros operation. And they can't stand the scrutiny, especially when everybody in Washington is not corrupt. All right, people want to know, and we're going to uh, in about six months to ten months. The 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 uh, like Black Lives Matter and all these other institutions that Soros supported will be totally weak because the hundred thousand dollar jobs will disappear for these people, and uh, so th that's going to be a big sea change. Also. We're going to see a big sea change in the coverage from the media. That'll be about Thanksgiving to Christmas, that era. And the needles, depending on the, the channel and the newspaper, but uh, let's say the New York Times will be back to the way it used to report one year from now. But you'll see the change between Thanksgiving and Christmas. You'll start seeing toning down. Uh, who else? is there's There's other organizations like NBC and ABC they'll all start toning down by Thanksgiving and Christmas a lot and then uh, they'll be back to normal they're all different like 10 months from now let's say 10 months this this spring a couple organizations like CNN it'll be a couple years all right they're just diehards 
And I think people have to start looking at who owns these these uh, networks and things. Who 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 are they? And I think the guy for CNN. I'm not even sure. I mean, I have a rough idea. But do you notice they don't show up in the press? You never see their picture. They never talk about them. And they, even the opposition does not attack the owners. It's forbidden. It's like Murdoch. No one attacks him. And But everybody knows Murdoch owns you know, Fox and the Wall Street Journal. But uh, they don't know who the real owners of the CNN and things like that. And if their faces were put on the TV screen and where they live and what are their values, that'll change everything. I mean, I think I think CNN, he lives in, um, is part of the Comcast? It might be. I'm not, he, I think he's in Philadelphia or something. But that's, that's who they are. And uh, that's all part of the black hand I was talking about. They're the ones who, uh, along with, um, certain intelligence agencies they, they got rid of John F. Kennedy that's how powerful they are and nothing has happened to them nothing and they've taken the wealth of this nation and they have it hidden in shoeboxes <laughs> so we have the wealth it's it's the people's money sitting in all these different for example in this Federal Reserve well you you take the Federal Reserve and you slide it underneath the Treasury Department where all those functions used to be. These things are easy. It's, it's a piece of paper and you just write it in. We're nationalizing you. Then you go in there and you see all the money there. there I mean, there's tens of trillions of dollars sitting there. It's, it's, no one make it up. It's beyond your wildest dreams. They've hit it for many, many decades. And it's to the point where there's trillions. And you go, well, what is this money doing here? That's the people's money. And it's just through trickery that they changed it around. Now, the economy is probably not going to do really red hot in a lot of places in the next 12 months. I would say significant slowdown. Uh, and it has nothing to do with Trump. Some of this is karma for particular areas of the country. And uh, so... <clears throat> I, I came from a, another town uh, many years ago, and the whole town is is slowing down because it was taken over by this black hand as well. And they're just running up capital type projects, you know, adding uh, hundred million dollar bills to a town of ten thousand people. <laughs> They'll never. It's Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico has eighty billion dollars in debt. There's only three and a half million people. How in the world does it happen? That's the black hand. They get the bonds approved way beyond the means to pay it back. And they siphon off huge amounts of cash in these construction projects. And most of the time, the projects fail. In the particular town I was at many years ago, uh, they built outdoor amphitheater, complete failure. Cost millions and millions of dollars. And then they built another one uh, uh, performing arts. I'm not against these performing arts. It's that they build this huge structure and they put it next to the high school. It's like part of the high school or something. And this 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 theme is in other towns. You'll see they'll put it. And it's a complete flop. It's never used. And it's millions of dollars. And, uh, and it goes on and on and on. The, the projects usually fail in their purpose. And then they just walk away. They don't care because it, it's about the money. Okay. So we had the hermit, and we had the, uh, what did we have here? Oh, harmony. So we're going to go towards harmony a little bit. Uh, I don't know how. But that is in, uh, and he's playing the violin. The angel is playing the violin. So there's going to be more harmony in, in, in Trump's life. Uh, before, two months ago, when I dealt a, a tarot card for him, he was the, uh, the star right the star I believe and that's reaching your goals and illuminating light on something so I, I think uh, this whole thing with Mueller is going to uh, dry up somehow and some of his people will leave with him now let's say Trump does fire Mueller for the first four to five weeks it's gonna be really really bad for him 
I you know it's like on the edge of of uh, being impeached. But then the pendulum goes totally the other way over the next two months. I mean, he's really, really high, uh, his ratings and his opinion, all right? So it really does it matter. Mueller has always been a mute point. He's not who he appears to be. Uh, he actually doesn't care for Comey. You know, they always say him and Comey are close. I never get that. When I measure it, they're, he, he, he kind of doesn't like him. He doesn't hate him, but he just doesn't like Comey. And... Uh, you can hear my beautiful dog. He sees a deer coming on the property. And the deer, you know, they don't have, they don't have his permission to be here. <laughs> so that's what he's barking about. And he, he, he doesn't like being dissed. And, and that's, so I have to go down there and tell him to calm down. Anyway, uh, there's so much going on. Uh, Anyway, that town I was telling you about, it was a tourist town, and their whole economy has slowed down in the last two years. And it's going to slow down another 20, 25%. So they're going to get hammered. You know, the karma catches up. And the black hand, these individuals that are part of it, they're going to hide like rats when the light is shined on. And that's what it's going to take for Trump to turn around. And, and according to my relative, his dream, he's just totally outgunned right now. He's totally under siege. And uh, he's going to be crawling his way back. I think uh, it's really exciting to see that the demons and the darkness is retreating right now. It's like the ocean. You know, the wave comes in, and then the ocean, it goes right back out. You know, and that's how the evil works. And we're going we're gonna to come to better times. Now, uh, uh, there's so much, it's so overwhelming. <laughs> we always worked with Russia. Behind the scenes, we're not going to go to war with Russia, even though that, that's what the dark hand wants. That's what Hillary was hired to do. Her job is to go to war with Russia. Uh, that's one thing that Trump is not doing, what the, the black hand wants. Uh, now, the black hand... Trump has come out of that in a way. As I told you before, that's his faction. And uh, his faction is slowly gaining strength. And we've turned, as I told you at the beginning of the year, it won't be until July that we start turning the ship around and getting the upper hand on the black hand. So it's, it's really amazing. Uh, we made it this far. Trump is still alive, and he will not be assassinated, and he will not be impeached, all right? Even though it looks like it. And I do think, uh, I, I want to say two other things real quick. If he were to finish his whole term, he would win re-election, okay? But that's almost another timeline. And I, I don't know how to explain it. But the timeline we're sort of in is, the people should be behind him more and be more forceful in supporting him. And it's taking so long, it's just draining his energy. Also, we're going to have the, uh, the big issues coming up. And there's no way to uh, explain it. So I had a dream, a vision three years ago, four years ago, I can't remember. And I'm in Florida. And I used to work on the beach in Florida. And uh, and I worked on a boat. It was really neat. I enjoyed it. Uh, but anyway, I went through the vegetation on the sand dune. And when you reach the end of it, that's called edge of veg. <laughs> that's, it's a survey term, edge of veg. And the ocean, when you're on the edge of veg, you walk through the sand dune, you walk through the, the vegetation. And when you get to the edge, the ocean would be... Uh, like, I don't know what it was, 60 feet away, 80 feet away, uh, 10 to 12 feet lower, right? The ocean would be down lower, This, this the sea level. In this vision, I just walked up to the edge of veg, and the sea level was lapping at my toes at the edge of veg, which shows what? It shows a 12-foot 12 12 increase in the sea level is coming. 
That's all it's saying. It, it's going to be here. So what are the ramifications and how does that come about? Well, probably it's not from global warming and the ice caps, okay? That, that's not going to happen. And, uh, you know, right now they're just talking about a few centimeters, you know, happening uh, decade to decade. This is going to happen fairly quick. We're going to have it, boom, 12 feet. And you all know about those other maps where uh, you see what the world looks like if the elevation increased of, of the uh, ocean. So what would cause that? Probably that theory that says, well, around the equator, there's this big bulge of water sitting there. And if we had, as Edgar Casey said, uh, a turn of the axis by uh, either 90 or 180 degrees, you would get certain results. And, well, then if it goes 90, which I get constantly in my dowsing, if it does happen, it will be 90 degrees, uh, that would release that water around the equator. This is something the government knows. But the government says, with Al Gore and everyone, they say, well, look over here. It's global warming. Let's panic. Let's stop, uh, let's stop using fossil fuels. It has nothing to do with that. It has nothing. You know, air pollution is not good, all right? We all know that. But they want to put the screws on the economy to shut it down, to start this world government to, to put themselves more in power as this shift happens and they know it's coming they already know where the elevation is going to be you know I just told you add 12 feet you know so uh, that's going to be like for South Florida well it's 10 feet above sea level things like that it's going to be a huge mass movement of humanity to safety if this were to occur well I get that for the first week of August let's say of 2019 2019 is a huge change and it's going to change the paradigm it's going to change all our institutions it's going to change the way we look at the world we are already experiencing this change right now that's the battle that's why it's interesting watching this political battle it's, it's just this is going to be intense and uh, for example so the Democrats they're going to see that this is going to cause them damage in the election coming up in a year from now it might be our last big election because if we do have a huge change in August 2019 uh, we might did a, just appoint someone to be president from uh, our institutions that because it might be impractical to have an election so right now there is a possibility of 15 20 percent we have an election I'm the only one saying that but I'm that's the way it looks. In 80%, we don't have an election. What's, what's not being said is, why, why are we on a timeline where we don't have an election? Because the people didn't push for the change fast enough. And it has to go to this other expression to bring about the changes necessary for the new human race coming up, basically. And, and we're going to think and feel differently. And the people who are open to these changes, for example, you know where I said the safe zone was. I should do it. I'm going to do it. I'll douse like an area of the country. And, you know, Kansas is like the center of it, let's say. Because I just picked it arbitrarily, came to my head, and it does very well. Your money invested there will do very well. It's not that it'll go up in value you're going to have a place to live that produces food probably. It might be as basic as that. And uh, uh, places like Portland are not going to do well. And p places like New York, well economically New York is just going to slow down in the coming year. You know, And I think it already has. I said this a year ago, but uh, it's going to continue. Their real estate is going to continue to go down. And uh, if you're a young person I almost say don't go to college, <laughs> you know, use that land, use that money to invest in um, something, a fishing boat, <clears throat> a farm, like in those safe areas I just mentioned, uh, <clears throat> things of that nature. <clears throat> the, the, the advantage of increasing your frequency 
through prayer, meditation, good food, exercise, trying to live this holistic lifestyle, as it were, uh, you're going you're, you're gonna to get clear messages to you, for you, what you should do, where you should go. And that'll be an indication. Now, if we go on the other timeline where there is an election, uh, I don't think it's necessarily better, you know, for humanity. And I, I haven't explored that. And um, <clears throat> I do have that we have like three major timelines and there's like maybe 12 subordinate timelines with minor variations. Uh, that, that's all what I want to say for now. And uh, we'll go and explore more topics later. I think it's really exciting. I can talk for hours. I think you would be amazed what's happening. Uh, the dreams that we have, you coincide the dreams with the dowsing <clears throat> and other divina divination techniques and you can get a feel where we're going. You can increase your accuracy. I, I, I think one of the reasons, I really don't know why a lot of YouTube psychics are wrong all the time. I mean, 90, 80% are wrong. And when I rub my finger, I run, I run my finger down YouTube and I douse it without even listening to it, I'm only getting like one or two out of 50 to 100 are even worth listening to. The rest of them are just, you know, the predictive, I don't know why. They, they know the stuff. They sound real good. They know their astrology work. They know their... Uh, Oh, they know all the little tarot cards and they, you know, like they memorized it. But you got to let your intuition come through and you got to let your dreamscape come through. And you really got to, you can't, you can't be taking drugs on the side. You know what I'm saying? You, you, or, or be an alcoholic on the side. You, you got to clean up your act a little bit. You got to get a little clear here to, to ensure that the message is coming through. I think things are just going to happen anyway. We're going to be forced to change. And, and that ultimately is going to happen. So I really wouldn't worry about it. I'm actually optimistic because uh, humanity in America is tired of all these wars. War, war, war. And they sell it to us. And it has nothing to do with the soldiers who's fighting there. It's just that we're being manipulated into this for commerce, for money, for power. And don't forget, war is a sacrifice. And that's how the ruling class looks at it. These are blood sacrifices part of a greater ceremony and and uh, they're just there to, to slaughter innocent people and it's because uh, they're lost souls who are running this and the demons are speaking through them those demons are disappearing it's really really exciting uh, anyway bye bye I gotta go get Max